what's going on youtube welcome back to my pizza channel it's the pizza guy john and today we're going to be making pizza using the caputo nuvola flour this is a type zero flour it's not your type double zero flour but it is the type zero flour um, this flour is good for like the real big airy crust. So that's the go today. I found a recipe that I'm going to be following. Uh, I'm going to be using my Famag mixer here. So I have all my ingredients. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, first, what we want to do, again, we have one gram of fresh yeast. Normally, I, I used to use a lot of fresh yeast, but um, it's definitely, you got to use a lot of it. Um, and unfortunately, I wasn't using a lot, but I do have a bunch frozen. So this is one gram of fresh yeast. I got 553 grams of flour, uh, 23 grams of salt, and then we're going to be getting 922 grams of flour here. Uh, basically it's all fermented in room temperature. It doesn't go in the fridge. Um, so let's go ahead and get our flour measured out. Like I said, we need 922 grams. This is a one kilogram bag. Um, so it's going to be a lot of majority of this flour. So Let's go ahead and I'm just going to kind of open that up on here so we don't waste any of it. And like I said, 922 grams of flour. And comment down below if you've tried this flour and what you've thought of it. Again, I've been, I've had this flour for a while now. I'm super excited to use it. Uh, finally having the opportunity to, so. Uh, hopefully we're gonna get some real good pizzas out of this, but let's go ahead and get our flour measured All right, so we're almost there. All right, a little bit more so We'll just get just the pinch out here And I'll leave down the recipe down below. Again, I just found this online, so again, I'll link it down below as well. Uh, so you can go ahead and try. I got the flour off of Amazon. Um, but again, there's other websites. So that's 922 grams of flour. So now that we have our flour, let's go ahead. And first, what we want to do is you want to go ahead and let's mix it. Let's measure out. Uh, we're going to pour our water and our salt. But first, what I want to do is I want to get this uh, yeast uh, dissolved. So I'm just going to reserve a little bit of the water for that. And we're going to go ahead and pour all the water in here. And then we're going to go ahead and get the salt. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to dissolve the salt right now. So we'll get this mixer turned to about three or four. And we'll just let that mix just for a couple minutes or a minute or so just to kind of dissolve that down. And we're just going to let that mix just for a little bit. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to add the flour little by little bit by little. Uh, we're not going to add all of it fully so we'll let that go. And again, this is the Fomag IM8S mixer. Um, again, the top, the bowl does come out, which is really nice. I really love this mixer. Um, so it's definitely, you know, helped me make a lot of good doughs. All right, so we'll get that turned down. We'll kill that. And we're gonna add about, I don't know, maybe half of this. All right. And we'll continue mixing. And while that is mixing, I'm just gonna basically just dissolve the yeast that I have here. Again, you can use uh, just some regular yeast as well, active dry yeast. Um, but again, this recipe called for uh, instant. So now that that's mixed in, melted down, we're gonna go ahead and let's just get that added in there. And just make sure that we have all that in there. Okay. 
And while that's mixing, we're gonna go ahead, let's get the rest of this flour in. And I can already tell this flour has like a nice sweet, you know, smell to it. But we're gonna go ahead now and get this added in there. And I'm just gonna take the rest of this off. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get this turned on a little bit higher. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a timer now, or basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this now for about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, we'll come back here halfway. We'll take a look to see how it is, but basically we wanna mix this until it's smooth. Um, and then we will go ahead um, and do some other room temp uh, cooling down or basically kind of relaxing. So I'll come back shortly. All right, so we're looking about eight minutes now. As you can see, the dough has come together a lot. Um, it is a small amount of dough or flour for the mixer. So it's kind of not really coming together fully. Um, but what I'm gonna do now at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the mixer and I'm gonna knead, hand knead it just for a couple minutes, just kind of pull it to get a little bit, together a little bit more, build some more of that gluten in there. Um, so let's go ahead and do that then. And so let's go ahead and let's take this out. And again, the best thing about this mixer, like I said, um, because it, it is used for high hydration, you could go ahead and pull this up. And basically it just comes up like that. Easy access for you to go ahead now and pull everything out. So uh, let's go ahead and let's mix this or let's hand knead this now for just a couple minutes. And the dough is a little tough, um, but once we let it kind of sit at some room temp for a while, it should uh, relax a little bit more and be easier uh, to knead. So I'll do this for a couple minutes and then we'll come back. All right, so I've had kneaded this dough for a couple minutes now. Um, still not fully smooth, still feels a little tough, but that's totally fine. What we're gonna do now at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and get this covered. Let's see, I'll cover with this. I'm gonna get this covered and I'm basically just gonna let this sit now at room temp for about, uh, let's say 30 minutes and then we'll come back. All right, so it's been 30 minutes now and as you can tell the dough is a lot more smoother. Um, in the meantime, I have taken, taken the top off and I have oiled it up. So I'm gonna go ahead now and we're just gonna kind of fold this up again. Kind of get it into a big ball. And get that tight here. Okay. And now at this point, we'll go ahead and now just get this placed in to, you could do a, any type of container, as long as you're basically able to get it covered up. And we'll get that covered up. We'll put this at room temp now, and we'll let this sit at room temp for 14 hours, and then we'll come back. All right, so it's been 14 hours later. As you can see, the dough has basically doubled in size in the room temp for 14 hours. So now at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, take it out of this container, and we're gonna boil it up, uh, 250 to 260 gram dough balls. So let's go ahead and get this out. And the dough is definitely feeling a lot softer now, feels good. And it smells good too, so that's a good sign. Super airy, which is nice. So, feels good. So, let's go ahead and we're gonna get this split up to about 200 and let's do 260. So, 233, 250, 259, and 260. So, now at this point, we'll just go ahead and ball it up, pinch your edges and pull it, and let's go ahead and get that closed off. Smells nice and sweet. And so then again, at this point, you'll go ahead and put it in your container, in your proofing box. Um, and you'll do that, cover it up, and you'll leave it at room temp for another 10 hours before you get ready to cook. So 
I'll go ahead and finish that off and then we'll show the end result. All right, so here's the last one. It's a small, little smaller one, which is totally fine. Go ahead and get that. I'm just gonna kind of roll that out. Get that placed in here. And so we have them all spaced out, all 260. And now at this point, like I said, what we'll do is we'll go ahead, get this covered. I may go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of semolina on top. Just so that way it ain't drying out. And we'll go ahead and get that covered and we're gonna put this again at room temp for 10 hours. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll come back in 10 hours. All right, welcome back YouTube. It has now been 10 hours. As you can see, the dough has doubled in size and so it is ready to, to cook. So let's go ahead and take a look at the oven real quick. I've, I've had preheating now for about 30 minutes. It's the Unicoda 16. And right in the center, we're looking about 885. So the oven is ready to go. And we're just gonna be making a pepperoni pizza with the cup and crisp. Again, just some mozzarella and just some Bianco di Napoli tomato. So let's go ahead and get started. And again, this is a roughly 260 dough ball, ground dough ball. So we'll put some semolina. And again, this was sitting at room temp for uh, 10 hours. I will post a recipe down below that I used. Kind of just dunk that in there, get some of the semolina off. And you can see this dough ball is ready, super full of air. So we're basically just gonna start from the middle. And let's kind of get some crust there. And again, I'm just gonna go towards the middle. And again, you're with this, you're gonna make some big crust. So that's what we're gonna do here. And a little bit more semolina. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just closing it right here at the end. That way we could get the air in and then closes it off. So again, that's what makes the crust big. So let's go ahead and get some of the semolina off. And we're just gonna go get to stretching. And still a little tough to use, uh, but it's totally fine. I'm just kind of, and we don't want to get too close on this edge, so I'm just going to kind of and we're almost there. So this is pretty strong dough, which is nice, but again, you don't want to stretch it out too, too much. So I'm just gonna kind of get a little bit more here. And that's good for now, once I get the sauce on and everything, then um, it should be able to pull a little bit more. So this is roughly uh, about 12 inches or so. So let's go ahead and we'll get some sauce done. It's monthly around three ounce sauce ladle. Okay, then we're gonna go down with a good amount of mozzarella. Okay, and go ahead and get our pepperoni. And let's go ahead. I love these pepperonis only because again, they do uh, crisp up and they just, uh, honestly, I think have a better flavor than other ones that I have tried. Okay, so I'm gonna go there. Always gotta clean your hands off and get some semolina on here. And straight to the peel. All right, and we're trying to stay away from the crust. So I don't want to mess that up. And straight into the oven. Okay, 
straight in and then we'll get that turned down all the way down low and we're gonna go ahead now and let that cook and we're gonna watch the crust rise again it's supposed to give off a pretty big crust uh, so that's what I'm hoping for at this point and so we'll let that base settle Go to smell that pepperoni cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get it lifted back here. I don't want the back to cook too much. It's back into the same spot. And you can see a nice color. Bottom's cooking nicely. Again, the oven is over 850, close to 900, so Again, the stone is perfect to cook the bottom. So let's get this. And we'll get this side over here. So yeah, the crust is looking good. We'll get a cut inside the crust and see what it's actually look, gonna be looking like. Okay. And let's finish off this side. God damn it. All right, so we're looking good there. Let's go ahead and get this inside to cool down and we'll cut it into that crust. So let's get it inside. All right, so here's the pizza. Had a slight little tear in there, but that's, that's okay. Again, it's not about you know what the pizza looks like it's more my more main concern is taking a look at this crust so let's go ahead and get this as you can see it is a pretty big crust uh nice and airy nice little bounce to it. you can still hear the crisp to it which is nice take a listen it's a nice cr airy crisp crust so let's go ahead and take a look at this crust actually And that's, this is what we're going to be looking at. So let's just get a little piece here. And as you can see, nice pillowy, bound, nice bounce back. Look at those air bubbles. Bottoms cooked real nicely. Again, has that nice crisp. So let's go and take, let's get a bite out of this. I want to take a taste of this crust and see what it tastes like. Again, this is the Caputo uh, Supernova flower. Hmm. That's honestly really good. Nice, sweet. Like I said, it's light, it's airy. So again, if this is something that you like, like my video, subscribe to my channel, turn on that bell notification, check out my Instagram at the Pizza Guy John because I will be posting some more photos of some pizzas that I do make since I do have four more dough balls. I got a couple of pizzas that I will be making and posting to my Instagram. So go take a look at that as the Pizza Guy John. Again, leave a comment down below if you've tried this flower out. Other than that, I look forward to hearing from you. We'll talk soon.